Psalm 57, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The psalmist pins down, Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up, Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions. I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my footsteps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me. Into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves, Selah. My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery in heart. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations, for thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, again for this privilege to stand and proclaim the precious word of God. A lamp under our feet, a light under our path. It is uh, the absolute final authority of our lives. It is definitely what is needed in these dark days. The entrance of thy words give it light and understanding to all that are in the house. Father, as we assemble this evening, we come, Lord, looking unto thee, the author and finisher of our faith, for help, for strength, for uh, your touch during this uh, broadcast. Now, Father, for those who are watching in their living rooms or on their phones in a car or wherever they are, I pray that, Lord, uh, the Word of God would go forth and be clear. It would ring true in their minds and in their hearts. Uh, and I pray, Father, that they would uh, ever draw nigh to God, that God might draw nigh to them. I pray if there's any uh, watching tonight, listening to the sound of my voice, uh, unsaved, lost without God, that tonight would be the night of their very salvation. Now, Father, I pray you'd sit down amongst us. I pray that, Lord, you would help us, uh, us few that are here in the sanctuary tonight. Uh, and may we truly say that it's been blessed to be able to uh, uh, once again come to the house of God. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. Get glory to your name. And, Father, we'll thank and praise you for what you do, for it's in the wonderful the holy, the glorious name of the Lord Jesus, we ask these things, uh, amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to some things in this psalm. Uh, this psalm is a psalm of David. And David gives us some insight to some things that are going on in his life. Uh, and notice, if you will, his cry. Uh, verse number one, he says, Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, uh, for my soul trusteth in thee, yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Uh, I will cry unto God most high, uh, unto God that performeth all things for me. Uh, uh, can I say tonight, uh, the greatest thing you can ever do when you realize you're in trouble uh, is call on the Lord. Uh, the Bible says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Uh, it's amazing. The devil can mess with you. Uh, he can uh, uh, battle with you. Uh, he can strive to overcome you. Uh, uh, but the farthest he can ever push you is to your knees. Uh, and if you never get on your knees and begin to call uh, unto the God of heaven, you'll find help in time of need, uh, and you'll find exactly what you need to overcome the devil. We see David crying upon the Lord. Uh, notice, if you will, David's confidence in verse 3. He shall send from heaven. Didn't say God might send from heaven. Didn't say God, if he doesn't have anything better to do, he'll send from heaven. Didn't say, well, I hope God sends from heaven. He says, he shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up, 
Selah. That means stop, think about that for a minute. Uh, uh, David didn't uh, uh, waver at all in his confidence towards God. Uh, uh, David in his own self might not have had that much confidence, uh, but he'd done been uh, down the road too much with God. Uh, he'd done seen God show up and deliver him time and time again. Uh, he's called on God, uh, and his confidence is God's going to show up uh, and save me from him that's wanting to swallow me up. Uh, 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 he goes on to say, God, God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Uh, uh, friend, this is much bigger than you and I. Uh, 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 what we do uh, in the name of the Lord has the Lord's name attached to it. Uh, and God's never going to let his name uh, 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 be drugged through the mud. He's going to stand up and defend his people every time. Uh, thank God for his confidence. We see his cry. Now notice David's circumstances. Look at verse 4. He said, my soul is among lions. Don't sound like a great place to be. He says, and I, leave it, I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Looks like everybody David's associated with is out to do him in. I mean, uh, uh, looks like he's in, a, in the midst of a perverse people. Uh, he's amongst uh, uh, lions, and he's amongst some whose souls are set on fire. Have you ever known somebody that no matter how kind you try to be to them, they're just nasty? Sure. Well, this person has a soul set on fire because they're a child of hell. And he also says that their teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Did you ever just, no matter what, you round somebody, you talk to somebody, it just seems like everything they spew is venom. Well, David's in a circumstance of a crowd uh, that we would want to be around. I'm sure he's not wanting to be around. Can I say some of us are facing some hardships. Some of us are facing some things that seems like snares and seems like trouble, seems like uh, our hands are tied uh, Bless God, you want to get a haircut, you got to find a barber that's willing to do it uh, 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 off the clock and away from the barber shop. I mean, you know, uh, 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 all kinds of things. Uh, Brother Thad was telling me, Miss Tammy was at a grocery store the other night, and a lady had a cardboard ruler six feet wide, so you stay away from her six feet. I'd have gotten her grill. I promise you, I would have. I'm telling you, this world's gone crazy, and it seems like the things they deem essential for us is not what we deem essential. Amen. There are certain things that we deem greater than life and come to church is one of them we see his circumstances but notice Davis's course if you know anything about David it wasn't too far from him he'd always had a harp and he was willing to crank up a tune to honor God look at verse 5 he says be thou exalted O God above the heavens let thy glory be above all the earth he says the same thing in verse 11 be thou exalted O God above the heavens let thy glory be above all the earth. Isn't it amazing that in the midst of lions, in the midst of people whose souls set on fire, in the midst of people whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword, David is singing praise unto God. He had a chorus. I want you to notice the contrast in verse 6. He's talking about this crowd that you and I wouldn't want to hang around, that he's right in the smack dab middle of. And he says in verse number 6, they have prepared a net for my steps. He says, my soul is bowed down. Now he's, talking about, he's not talking about bending his knees and crying on God right now. He's talking about he's under a heavy load. Under a load so much that he can't hardly carry it anymore. His soul's bowed down. They've set snares. They have sought to throw a net between uh, him and his next step to catch him. goes on to say, they've digged a pit for me. They're wanting him to fall off into a pit. And make no mistake, the devil's got a pit for every one of us. He wants us to fall, so our testimony is ruined. And we see that um, this crowd's out to get him. But notice the contrast in this verse. It says, They have digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. He said, They've tried to catch me. They've tried to dig a pit for me. They've tried to 
capture me. He said, but they fell in the very pit they dig for me. Isn't that a contrast? Does not the Bible say uh, that God is not mocked? Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You realize everybody that seeks to do one of God's youngins harm, it's coming back on them. Mm -mm. What a contrast, huh? Uh, there's a lot of people thinking that they're doing a, a real chore shutting churches down. Wait till they stand before God someday. They wish they would have rethunk that, huh? Amen. Now notice, if you will, the choice David makes. Look in verse 7. This is what David chooses to do. In the midst of lions and people whose souls set on fire and people whose teeth are spears and arrows or tongues sharp, people who are setting snares for his steps and people who have dug pits for him, this is what David chooses to do. He says, my heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. He said, awake up, my glory, awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. Uh, for thy mercy is great unto the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. David said, I'm going to make a choice. My heart's fixed on this thing. Come what may. He said, I'm going to sing and praise the Lord. He said, I have made up my mind that I'm going to sell out for the honor and glory of Jesus. With all that in mind, I'm really interested in verse number one. Verse number one, David calling on God says, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be over." past. Can I say, my dear friends, as we sit here tonight, we are facing calamities in our country like never before. I don't know if you've caught the narrative. The narrative coming through the media and through everything is our lives have changed forever. They assume that from now on we're going to stay six feet apart from everybody. We're going to bathe in hand sanitizer every time we step out the door. That we're no longer going to go back to what we once were. Hogwash. Have you seen people out and about? Everywhere I go, people are congregating. Everywhere I go, people are trying to go about business as usual. This is another narrative they're trying to throw at uh, uh, folks. They're trying to let people know the world's not the same. The world is the same. It's still as wicked as it was before all this virus came up. But we are living in a calamity in that we can't go to church like we once did. We can't uh, 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 do things like we once did. They're trying to control us on where we can go and cannot go. The very fundamental Bill of Rights that every American has had uh, since 1776 is under attack, even as we sit here tonight. The liberals are not only trying to close churches, and by the way, the mayor of New York City said that he'll close them permanently. Uh, uh, we find that uh, 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 the liberals are trying to shut down uh, gun stores. They're trying to do away with people's guns. They're trying to do everything they can to take away people's civil rights. Won't be long. They'll try to take our voice away and say we can't say anything bad about the government. It's all coming down. We live in a state of calamity. We don't know how long it's going to be before we can openly worship again. We don't know. I'm trusting in God. I hope that, Lord willing, next Sunday we're all back in here together having a time. But we're living in a calamity in a time that we've never seen before. And I got to thinking, as David said, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I want to give you a little thought tonight on this. I want to preach on comforted in the calamities. Comforted in the calamities. We don't know what a day brings forth. We don't. We don't know what is on tomorrow's horizon. Wednesday's horizon. Next Sunday's horizon. We don't know. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the trumpet blows? We just go on to the glory. They can have it all. Hmm? We don't know what a day brings forth, but we do know that we can put our hope and our trust in the Lord. And there is a comfort available for God's people regardless of what calamity you may be facing. Can I say, first of all, comfort is found in the shadow of God. Look what it says again. 
Verse number one, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. There's comfort found in the shadow of God. Can I help you with something? God don't have to pick me up. God don't have to put his hands on me. God don't have to uh, 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 pacify me. All God's got to do is walk before me and let me get in his shadows. Uh, if I can just get in the shadows of God, guess what? The enemy can't see me. Uh, guess what? Uh, 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 nothing else uh, uh, will harm me as long as I'm that close to God. Uh, my dear friends, my calamity will not overtake me. Listen, that shadow shows you're close. It shows the closeness to God. You can't walk in somebody's shadow if you're not close to them. Hmm? Now, I know we got a great big God. But can I help you with something? You've got to still be close to him to, su to suffer the refuge of his shadows. Amen. There is a comfort available to God's people in the shadow of God. There's closeness. Can I say the best place you could ever be is close to God. Sure. The closer you are to God, the more distant the things of the world become to you. God help us uh, uh, to ever draw nigh to God that he might draw nigh to us. Oh, we ought to walk in the shadows of God. Not only will you find closeness there, you'll also find some coolness from the heat. When God's standing between you and the sun, you just get the fresh breeze. You just get coolness. You're not suffering the heat. You're not suffering the, uh, the turmoil and all the trauma. Uh, you're just walking with God. Hmm? Jordan brought it out in Sunday school this morning. Uh, Enoch was and he was not. Why? He's just walking with God. And finally God said, hey, you ready to go to my house? And Enoch said, let's go. And they went. Hallelujah. Huh? When you're walking that close to God, uh, hey, there is nothing that will trouble you. And I say, not only is there closeness, not only is there coolness from the heat and the tempest, but there's also calmness from the pressure. When you're close to God and you're in his shadows, guess what? You don't worry. Because you're with God. Hmm? You realize just how big he is and that he can handle it. In the midst of everything David's facing in this psalm, I don't find him troubled at all. He describes the crowd that's around him, the crowd that's trying to destroy him, and all he's doing is praising God. And when you're close to God, you'll find a calm that you won't find when you're not close to God. He, God can handle the pressure. We're the ones that have the problem with the pressure. You know, when you won't have a, uh, a life that is uh, part of a pressure cooker when you're walking with God, because it don't matter then. Amen. Can I say there's comfort in the calamities, and you can find comfort in the shadow of God. Can I say, secondly, you can find comfort in the scriptures of God. Amen. So many people get so tore up and bent out of shape because they have not let the word of God increase their faith. You'll find comfort in the scriptures. In the scriptures, you'll find the promises from God. You'll find that he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You'll find that uh, uh, he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You'll find that he changeth not. You'll find that he is for you and not against you. You'll find wonderful promises. You get comfort from that. Uh, it amazes me. Jordan taught out of Psalms this morning. I preached out of Psalms this morning. I'm preaching out of Psalms again tonight. You know why? Because there's a lot of comfort in the Psalms. David went through a whole lot, but uh, through it all, he worshiped God and he praised the Lord. Not only will you find in the Scriptures promises from God, you'll find the peace of God. You won't find peace in the world. Jesus said, My peace I live, leave with you, not peace as the world giveth, my peace. And can I say, when you get in the Word of God and God begins to speak to your heart, you'll find regardless of what you're facing, there is a peace. We found uh, the Apostle Paul had an infirmity in the flesh. He prayed three times, but you know what he found from the voice of God? He found out that God's grace was sufficient. And God's grace will carry you through, friend. In the Scriptures, you'll find the performances of God. You know what I like about the scriptures? You can go in there and find out where God touched a little shepherd boy and he defeated a giant. 
You'll find where uh, 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 tyrants threw uh, uh, God's people in fiery furnaces only to find that God was in there waiting on them. Uh, uh, you'll find that there were red seas and uh, seas of opposition and God just parted the waters. Uh, 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 you'll find how God touched blinded eyes, how he healed withered hands, uh, how he cleansed lepers, uh, how he took nothing and fed the multitudes. Uh, you'll find all the things God has been able to do throughout the ages and that's still our God, hallelujah. And if he can do it for them, he can do it for us because he's no respecter of persons. You find that in the scriptures. You don't find that in storybooks. You don't find that listening to uh, the governor give his little daily speech. Uh, I don't know about you, but his very voice annoys me. Uh, it wouldn't be a good service if I didn't rag on the governor a little bit, would it? He called us out. Bless God, it's his turn. He can dish it out. Let's see if he can take it. Hmm? I'm telling you, you can find comfort in the midst of your calamity. If nothing else, rag on the governor. It makes you feel better. No? Can I say this? You'll find comfort in the sovereignty of God. You see, no matter what you're facing, it didn't catch God by surprise. A lot of times it catches us by surprise. A lot of times we don't know where what's going to happen or what we're going to face or or when we're in the midst of something, how long we're going to be there, or how long it's going to be before God reaches down and pulls us out of it, we don't know. Sure. But I can take refuge in that God's still on the throne. Sure. I can take refuge in the fact that God's never even been challenged. And I can take refuge in the fact that He says He does all things well. And if God has allowed it, then God's got a reason for it. I don't understand all that. It's not my business. It's His. Hmm? You realize we are a temple of the Holy Ghost. We've been bought with a price. Our life is no longer our own. It belongs to God. And if God can get glory out of our lives, I say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hmm? God allows things to happen for a reason. Now, I don't know why we're not allowed to assemble tonight, but I have had several folks uh, uh, say to me that, uh, hey, maybe after this thing is over and we get to come back together, maybe true revival will break out. Now, I know there's just a few of you here tonight, and you know we're only allowed to have ten in the building. I think Brian, as much as he eats, counts for two. I don't know. Uh, but listen, let me just give you a little encouragement. I've already talked to some preachers and told them to keep their phone on. If we get to come back together and this thing starts a breaking, huh? We'll go right into meeting. It doesn't bother me, huh? Amen. Huh? Hey, whatever God wants, that He'll get glory. But you'll draw strength and comfort knowing God is in control. We don't know why things happen. God don't have to explain them to us. He's God. We're not. And when God chooses to do anything in our lives, it's not because he's against us. It's because he wants to show the world the character that he has developed in us. And can I say this? When God chooses to use us in any way, shape, or form, I say, glory to God, who are we? Miss Tammy and Brother Thad just sang that song that he took our cross. We should have died on that cross and died and went to hell. But he took our cross for us, uh, paid our sin debt, uh, is allowing us to go to glory when all this is over. Uh, and in the meantime, if he says, uh, just let me throw a little calamity at you, uh, I say, hey, uh, I ought to be in hell. I can handle a little calamity because I know when this thing is over, we win. Hmm? His sovereignty, God does know what's best. He always has a right, he always has a reason, and he always has a reward. I'll just trust in the mighty hand of God. Can I say this? You can find comfort in the Spirit of God. I'm glad he didn't leave us comfortless. I'm glad he indwells the believer with the Spirit of God. And I'm glad that the Spirit of God can't be taken from us. They can say we can't assemble, but they can't take the Spirit of God from me. Hmm? And the Spirit of God will comfort you. Jesus called him the comforter. Why? Because Jesus knew there'd be days when life got too big for us. And there'd be times when there was too much pressure. And there'd be times when uh, we'd be willing to throw in the towel. But we had a comforter that propelled us and helped us through life. Can I say something about the comforter? First of all, he stirs us. He said, Brother Doug, why do you get so fired up about all this stuff? Because I've got one inside of me just stirring me. Because hmm? I know what God's will is and what God desires. 
and it absolutely gets all over me when my civil rights and my uh, civil rights include worshiping God gets stepped on. Hmm? The Spirit of God will stir you up when you're in the midst of, of just being in a funk and in the dumps and you're sitting under a juniper tree. The Spirit of God come by and say, what are you doing here? Didn't I tell you to worship? Didn't I tell you to witness? Didn't I tell you to do a work? What are you doing sitting here idle? The Spirit of God will stir us up. The Spirit of God will still us. Sometimes we want to charge hell with a water pistol, and the Spirit of God says, nope, not now. You know, the Apostle Paul wanted to go into Macedonia, and the Spirit of God said, no. And then a little bit after that, the Spirit of God told him to go. And it was a real blessing. Him and Silas got beat and thrown in jail. And about midnight, Paul looked over there at Silas and said, Hey, Si, why don't you crank up that song you've been singing lately? And Silas got to singing. And Paul jumped in there with him. Next thing you know, they got to shouting. God uh, sent an earthquake, huh? You know the story. God bust up the jail, huh? Heard a preacher preach one time on the night the jailhouse rocked, huh? God set them free. But they didn't leave. Can I help you something? If you're right in the middle where God's at, why would you want to leave too? Yeah, hmm? And you know the story, the Philippian jailer was going to kill himself because he knew those men were given to his charge. And if they escaped, uh, him killing himself was a lot better than what the Romans were going to do to him. And, he, and Paul cried out says, Do thyself no harm, we're all here. And he came in and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they told him how to be saved. And he took them home. And the guy's whole house got saved. They all got baptized. And then he cleaned up Paul and Silas and took care of their wounds. Huh? You say, what happened? Paul wanted to go before then, but it wasn't in God's timing. Can I say, sometimes the Spirit of God will still us because it's just not time yet. And thank God that we have this comforter to comfort us. And then sometimes the Spirit of God strengthens us. He empowers us. I've seen some of the most meek and lowly of people when pressed, the Spirit of God come upon them and they stand up like a mighty, mighty warrior. Why? Because of who's inside them. Thank God for the Spirit of God. He leads us and guides us into all truth. He brings unto our remembrance the Scriptures. He walks with us and talks with us and He helps us through life's journey. There's comfort in your calamity. Part of that comfort's the Spirit of God. And then I find this. There's comfort in our calamities when we get a song from God. Look again at verse number 8. The Bible says, Awake up, my glory. Awake, sultry in heart. I, will, I myself will awake early. What's he saying? He says, I've got to get up and sing. Because I've got a song to sing about the Lord. And can I say... The Bible says there's a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. God give you a song in due season. When Israel was in captivity, they hung their harps on the willows. That was not propelling them through their, through their pain and their misery. But can I say, when you got a song, no matter what comes your way, that song will get you through it. That hope will get you through it. And can I say, God inhabits the praise of his people. And when we begin to sing unto the Lord, the Lord shows up and he joins in the refrain. My dear friends, thank God you can find comfort in your calamities. You can find comfort in being close to God under his shadow. You can find comfort in the scriptures. You can find comfort in the sovereignty of God. You can find comfort, my dear friends, in the spirit of God. And you can find comfort in a song from God. You see, Jesus was tempted in all points like we were, yet he was without sin. Jesus had the whole world turn against him, and he died in an open shame. Jesus knows what you're going through, and so Jesus left us a comforter, and he left us the scripture, and he left us these truths, because he knew there'd be times we'd need it. I exhort you not to get all down in the dumps because of the calamity. Get all excited because of the comfort 
available to us during these trying times. During these times, you have an opportunity to tell others about Jesus. You may never, ever have that opportunity like you do right now. Brother John Jones that visits from over Milan, he sent me a text this morning. He said, thank God for these times. He says, we're without excuse not to witness. He says, it just makes me want to pick up the phone, phone book and start calling folks. Hmm? Yeah, you can tell somebody about Jesus. Hmm? There are a lot of folks whose nerves are, are, are shot right now. There are a lot of folks who are freaked out right now. There's a lot of folks that, uh, 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 I mean, you know, used to, I thought Darth Vader was pretty cool, but now everybody's going to be wearing Darth Vader masks just to go out in public. I mean, we're all going to look like astronauts walking around with a bubble on our head, huh? What better time to tell folks, hey, I know one that can help you through all this mess. His name is Jesus. Tonight. And you're in the midst of lions and people whose souls on fire and all these things. Remember this psalm. Remember what David said. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. Unto these calamities be overpassed. I'm glad they didn't come to stay. They came to pass. And one of these days they will pass. But until then stay in the refuge of the shadow of God's wings and it'll be all right let's have a word of prayer father we bless you thank you for the good singing we enjoyed thank you for the scriptures thank you for the hope we have in what thus saith the Lord Lord if David found a refuge under the shadow of thy wings God you're no respecter of persons and if you would do that for him you would do that for us Help us, Lord, to do, as Brother Jordan taught in Sunday school this morning, to find a time to worship every day so that when we do get to come and worship in the house of God, we'll be truly ready to worship as a corporate body. And Father, until then, till these calamities are overpassed, help us, Lord, to stay close to the very heartbeat of God. Bless now, bless those who watch tonight. Somebody needed some comfort tonight. Help them, we pray. Continue to help your church, help your people, and God get glory from our lives. And Father, we'll not fail to give you the glory and the honor for it all. We bless you, we praise you, and we thank you for all your choice blessings. Bless throughout this week, give us an opportunity to tell somebody how great you really are, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.